Welcome everyone to another little bit like mail time video. I stopped at my parents and collected a few more things from the attic and basement of the vintage computing leftover things. So I'm also curious if they still work. So this board has some AMD K6 too. However, I first need to Google some voltage settings because in the attic I removed an AMD K6 because I wanted to have something slightly faster. In some drawer I found this AMD K6 too. So first a quick googling of jumper settings and voltages not to, to fry it immediately and, and then praying that it hopefully still works. Unfortunately this motherboard may be too old. Maybe I took a too new CPU for this uh, motherboard manually only mentioned K6. And this is a K6 too and at that time it started that the CPUs had a lower core voltage compared to the I.O. voltage to reduce power dissipation and such and heat. So this CPU is already down to as low as 2.2 volt, which I jumpered in manually. As a, I don't trust this, uh, this motherboard already comes with auto detection, but as the CPU is newer than the motherboard, I don't trust that to work just now. And um, yeah, so we have keyboard, VGA, trusty ISA card, that because it works in the other board, and the ventilation needs to survive a minute or two without uh, the fan running because I did not see a fan header here immediately obvious anywhere as far as I can see. Maybe back in the day they used a floppy hard disk cable connection so but for a short time this should be fine. Unlike the other motherboard I can here at least read the switch labels so uh, power, GN soft power, speaker, reset, power LED, HD, infrared. So I are. Hmm. So let's see. Otherwise, I it's a little bit unclear here um, with the soft power. Hmm. Hope the last. So let's see. Okay, nothing. Whatever. So in yesterday's test, this board did not want to power on, and I shortly googled it, and it turns out. Some other problem also has this with ATX boards sometimes. Maybe it has to do with this NVRAM battery being totally dead and the chipset or such powering on in such a state that it does not correctly uh, sense or drive the power rails or this uh, standby power. And as you can see here from this AT, ATX adapter, I need to have the switch here to power it on. So this power on line here is this force pin from the top there. What or the official number is, but which means we could force the board to power on. I read that some people had success with this, so let's try if this crashes and burns or yields some useful result. On this plug, so they say it's supposed to be the green. Let's check. Keyboard is there. I saw keyboard blinking. But not more than keyboard blinking. Wait, we have we have indeed ISA card. Don't know why it didn't work the first time. So it detects um, I changed the K6 to Pentium because I couldn't sure if that would be supported. Let's see what happens if we remove power. Okay, if we remove power, we have nothing. Let's see if the power switch now works. Should be the first one. No, it indeed works. Now the power switch works. So, um, but now we can't be sure if this is just the battery. Actually, could probably remove the battery again. But this is of course a good hint for everyone in retro computing and such that a totally discharged NVRAM battery can somehow cause on some boards for them not to power on with a standby power security for ATX power supplies. Mm -hmm. Now the question is, do we destroy the board with an K6? Let's see, maybe we just retest what is with this battery here. If we put in the old one, does it power on? The 
and now it turns also on with an empty battery. N not everyone had success with this method. Um, I read in the internet from others that doing this once fixed this issue. Interestingly, it says power supply minus 5 volt fail. Hmm. But maybe that means it's only out of uh, tolerance. Yeah, I also wanted to try if this fan works because this fencing is, uh, say, right here 12 volt and not connected. Oh. That works. And that is uh, also a mistake in the manual, I guess. First of all, this is not a regular fan header. Um, the fan header is not soldered in apparently, and it only has two normal jumper like pins. And in the manual, it says one says 12 volt and the other not connected, and see. So that is a little bit funny. Yeah, okay, so. It's a little bit loud and annoying, but that's what it is. Okay, so at least this board still works after this trick. And um, let's see if this K6 also works. Just while we are at it, um, as I got a whole stack of old things that uh, probably half of them are not from me, but collected from my father and brother, from neighbors and friends and recycling. They are thrown away stuff. Uh, let's try this Pentium MX. I never had those back in those days. They were too expensive for me. I brought the cheap stuff, the IDT Winship, and uh, later the AMD set had quite outstanding performance anyway. So let's see if this Pentium MX also works while we have this board open and such. So bridged it indeed powered on. So this really has something to do with this NVRAM storage, uh, if not more. Is it valid? Does it, does it work? Okay, but now it powers on immediately. Hmm. Okay, testing more of the CPU with, uh, I hopefully find a pattern or if it now works reliable with this battery. But uh, this power on jumpering chip is then really something to keep in mind in general. Let's test some more of this old stuff. Let's see what happens with this K6 too. That is not listed in the motherboard manual, so I configured manually 2.2. The manually only shows a previous K6 without the two, so let's see what happens. But it posts. Okay, then this K6 2 can apparently work on this, but okay, funnily enough, it unfortunately detects the CPU as 486 because it's Probably not known in the BIOS. Maybe we need to try to flash the BIOS another day. I wonder if this is running at optimal speeds and I'm not sure if this kind of K6 requires some BIOS chipset programming for performance and such. It's a little bit strange that the BIOS would not use the CPU ID to print out the actual CPU name. But at least the CPU works. I'm curious as was Linux detects is not recognized by the BIOS K6 CPU that is showing up as Force 86. So before we end this video, let's quickly try to boot this 386 Linux that I installed on the other day. And um, wait, this is not coded. This is also not coded. There is not the coded pin missing. I guess I get another cable. I don't want to bend or clip this pin there today. It took quite a while to find the cable, all of them were coded except this one, So, but at least in contrast to the 486 where they did not have this plastic, here you have at least this plastic guidance. Yeah, this fan unfortunately is a little bit annoying loud. Of course a little bit funny and ironic to have an ISA card in there. But the Matrox did not want to power up in the other board. Maybe it's a thing of 3 and 5 volt PCI things or so. Yeah, this for sure boots faster than on the 386. But interestingly, Linux in contrast to the BIOS prints the correct CPU ID. So I really wonder how the BIOS can be so unintelligent not to use the CPU ID. Or they use this in case of an undetected CPU, but makes uh, not so much sense anyway. They could, in red warning signs, print their unsupported CPU by this BIOS. That would make bit more sense and would be more useful than 486. Really strange with this BIOS, but this is just what we're used to. Uh, decades of BIOS box and this is uh, 
one of the many reasons why people want open source BIOS and things they can fix and debug and so on. CPU megahertz could be right because I did not change the jumper settings. I wanted to test boot it first. So I have the jumpers the same as I tested the Pentiums. So I would need to change the multiplayer and such to have the, this is, I think this is a 350 or 360 something AMD K62. Anyway, nice that this is working and um, nice base collection for potential future YouTube videos. This is very nice of them that they printed the settings, voltage, multiplier and bus on the motherboard for the dip switches. However, we will likely not get the full performance out of this because I just realized this only has 60 and 66 megahertz bus frequency and um, I just checked this K6 2 is designed for 100 megahertz bus frequency multiplied by 3.5 so we are not going to get this. Just a quick last try to see if it runs with 66 multiplied by 5.5 or so. Let's see. Okay, still turns on, so maybe the battery helps. It also posts. But um, it looks like I need to search for another old Avandon board to see if I can find a Super Circuit 7 board to run this last higher end Super Circuit 7 CPUs at their full intended speed in the, in the future. Post and boot is certainly quite long. I actually built other kernels the other day. I um, guess we should have at least 30 as well. Ah, oh, we did not we did not set the date and time that was could have done that. Actually this this kind of CPUs did not yet have the megahertz in the CPU ID string for some interesting reason. So at least we run faster now. 66 I thought it's 5.5, maybe not. But at least more than before and uh, Bogomaps here 534 that is 500 something more than the 386 had, so just an indicator how fast the CPUs became in a decade or two. Actually I had a jumper wrong, so we can indeed run it at 660 something. Maybe this is even slightly over spec. If this was a 350, which I would need to re remove the heatsink for. But this is certainly less performance than you would get running it with 100 MHz bus frequency multiplied by 3.5 instead of the 66 multiplied by 5.5 that I have right now. I quickly try to put a PCI card in just for the fun. Interesting that this did not have AGP yet. I really would have thought AGP was out until then, but maybe later. Maybe one more quick boot with PCI card instead of the either one and then that's finally it for today. And on this board this Matrox card works, which means we could use a modern DVI digital interface. I had two K6 2, one with 350 or so and one with 366 MHz and the 366 AFR, that advanced frequency range or whatever that was, apparently is a slightly newer package, this improved CXT core and apparently they remapped the clock multiplier from 2 to 6, so just a quick test if we can overclock it slightly. So this is really running undervolted from down from 2.2 to 2.1 as I want to avoid overheating as this may potentially be slightly overclocked now if it really remaps the 2x multiplier to 6 and let's see if we can put Linux. Hmm, but somehow this is behaving erratic here. Okay so this apparently is not yet stable because I'm quite sure that booted some minutes ago. So let's alter the CPU voltage and potentially clock again. So maybe 2.2 volt at once. Because indeed it's now running at 400 megahertz so this probably should be to live uh, yeah 66 multiplied by 6 so it's really remapping the 2x multiply setting to 6 so we are running overclocked now. But with 2.1 volt it was not stable and 2.2 volt so far works. Question is of course 
how it will behave in compiling Linux for a week. But that is also an interesting quirk to know, tinkering with these vintage CPUs. And this 2.2 volt still overclocked also the grub prompt directly, so the instability of the command line editing on the grub prompt apparently indeed also was already a result of this undervolting. But that really was it now for today, and see you soon. And this benchmark runs so fast, I think the counter overflows. <laughs>